guys, good friend Rick Del Hog, and I'm back here with quite again another tip. Muscle Minute, quick tips in a hot minute. First and foremost, if you haven't tried this Synergy Guava Goddess, my God, this is it delicious. Ugh. And if you don't talk about tasty treats, I also want you guys to check out these delicious salted almond butter chocolates. You pair that up with a guava goddess and you got yourself a delicious snack. So as you guys have seen, I've been working on the shoulders. A little overhead press. And I'm pumped and I'm excited to make some gains, guys. I'm excited to make some shoulder gains in terms of strength and hypertrophy. Now that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is what I, had, what I did after the overhead press. You see, I'm a man that practices what he preaches, guys. I practice what I preach. So I did my banded T's, Y's, and M's, and they felt good, and they lit up my entire backside. They lit them up. So I was like, all right, well, my rear delts are lit. They're feeling good. They're feeling cooked. Why don't I do a little isolation work for the anterior and the medial delts? So, of course, I did my sickest finisher in the world that I showed you guys the other day. If you haven't seen that, check that video. That's a couple days back. But just because I haven't actually, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't go heavy on this movement in dang near 10 years. And I saw some footage of a man called Dan Green. And Dan Green is perhaps one of the strongest in the world. And he, 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 does a lot of front raises with dumbbells. And I always avoided them because front raises are one of Johnny One Plate's favorite moves. You guys know what I'm talking about. You go to your local gym, you'll see Johnny One Plate a lot of times doing front raises with the fives. Now, granted, guys, I have done my fair share of front raises and ladder raises. Heck, I know all about them. I know all about them, but I haven't pushed them. I haven't pushed them to the limits in years. Because, hey, <laughs> ha, ha, ha. First of all, I've had shoulder impingement a while back when I had an AC uh, separation as well. That was several years ago now. So really, ever since then, I haven't focused on shoulders at all. The only pressing that you guys really seen out of me was decline and dips. You dig? But now with all this extra banded work that I did before overhead pressing and after overhead pressing, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling strong. I'm feeling warm. So, I decided to try these out, all right? Let's go heavy with them. Let's see what it feels like. Now I didn't go super heavy because it's day, 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 day one. So, I just worked up to the 30s. And I was doing them with a pause, too, because I'm not going to be, uh, 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 like every other bodybuilder, U-Turb, 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 bodybuilder on YouTube, yes, where they're like, you know, using all this body English for front raises, silly, stupid, for curls, you want to use the boogs, curls, yeah, yeah, baby, all day, but not for front raises, so I was doing them with a pause, doing them with a pause, I worked up to the 30s. That I did for 15 each arm. And it was like, it was okay, but it's getting to that point where it's like, it just feels a little, a little funky in my shoulder. So I was thinking to myself, wait a second, wait a second, Rick Del Boogs. It was Rick Del Hagen, I'm sorry. I don't even know who I am anymore. Who am I? Who am I? It's all about fat grips, and no, no! I'm not a shill for fat grips, all right? They're just thick grip implements, guys. Have been known about since the 1920s. You can Google that up. Thick bar training, 1924, I believe. Maybe a book called Super Strength or something. Something along that nature. That's what it was. That's when it was first introduced that it was more beneficial. Because the thing is, if you, if you can't grip it, if you can't lift it, if you don't have the grip strength, you can't display the strength of your upper back. You understand what I'm saying? That's why you could have Johnny Horsepower in the weight room, and then you could put him on the wrestling mat with Johnny Stringbean. 
And Johnny String being winning 10 out of 10 times because he's got that, he's got that wired strength of big hands where he can actually put his strength, ap apply it. You understand what I'm saying? You guys understand what I'm saying? You guys understand what I'm saying? Look, the wrist. You think this is the size of a barbell? No. Anyways, what I'm getting at here is one of the biggest benefits of using fat grips, and it doesn't have to be the fat grips with the Z. I'm not talking about the company, guys. I'm talking about the thick bar implements. I'm talking about the, the you can get the, the $16 ones on Amazon. Whatever. They're all going to help. If you throw those fat grips on your dumbbells, and you're doing those front raises or lateral raises, first of all, you're going to get a substantial forearm pump because when you're doing them, you're holding the weight like so. You best believe you got to crush if you don't want to drop that dumbbell. So it is a great movement, unlike, 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 unlike curls, for instance. I was doing curls at one point with fat grips because that's when I was obsessed with, you know, getting bigger arms, you know, arms every single day. And you don't feel it quite as much because you have, like, the weight resting. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not like this where if you don't squeeze it to death, you're going to drop it. Whereas when you're doing the raises, oh, yes, you best believe you got to squeeze or it's game over. But anyways, the main benefit of the thick bar implements when doing presses or any shoulder movements is that it improves shoulder stability. So now you're talking about a movement that used to feel funky on me. Or if we're doing laterals, or if we're doing... It doesn't matter if you're doing it at the same time. You throw those fat grips on, and now all of a sudden it's going to feel better on your shoulders. But here's the kicker, guys. I went from doing 15 reps. 15 per arm. Okay, so 30 total, like so. To 20 per arm. <laughs> and how so? Because I made it more challenging? You understand what I'm saying? I made it more challenging, yet was able to get more reps in the grand scheme of things. That sounds like a win-win to me, boss. That sounds like a win-win to me, boss. You understand what I'm saying? Now you're getting more forearm work, getting more grip strength, you're getting better shoulder stability. Therefore, there's no inhibitory effect from your nervous system to lift that weight. See, that's the thing, guys. Sometimes you have the strength to lift it, but the nervous system doesn't want to lift it. Because after all, your brain controls your body, not vice versa. So if you're subconsciously thinking, I don't know if I can lift this, or uh, maybe this isn't safe to do, you're not going to lift it. Because your nervous system is not going to let you do it. There's, and then, and then it's going to inhibit you from doing so. So if you can increase shoulder stability, now it feels safer on your nervous system. Therefore, you're going to be able to apply more strength. Therefore, you're going to be able to bang out more reps. Therefore, you're going to make more gains. Voila!